Google Drive Tips and Tricks for Your Teacher's Toolbox Google Drive is most frequently associated with collaboration in the classroom. However, it provides also valuable tools to plan, organize, and execute your lessons and materials. There is certainly no lack of commercial teacher tools, in particular for the iPad, and some of them are very pricey. However, you can do more without additional costs with Google Drive. What's more, you can also work conveniently as you can work across devices such as laptops, smartphones and tablets and you are not restricted to using a single device. You can create your own Teacher's Toolbox application just by linking to different documents and materials in your Google Drive. I have set up basically two documents lesson planner which is a doc and the gradebook which is a spreadsheet. I have created a shortcut of the lesson planner file on my tablet so that I can have fast access to it. I also chose the keep on device option so that I can reference the file even when there is no Wi-Fi connection. In my lesson planner I do not only keep my lesson plans but I also link to various files which I might need before during or after lessons. I open the gradebook by tapping on the link and choose follow link. The link takes me to a spreadsheet in which I keep track of homework and exam grades, attendance and the summary for each student. Of course I can also link to different materials which I can use for preparing my class or to read along during a class on my tablet. I like to keep my detailed lesson plans in a presentation which I also use during the class. Again, I can link to different materials I need during the class. In this case, I need audio files for a listening exercise. I use my tablet mostly for reference only and do most of the typing on a PC or on my Chromebook which I take along to each class. In case you prefer using a tablet in the classroom, you can make use of Google Forms to enter data which reduces typing, e.g. by using a multiple choice question when entering grades, or as in this case, by using checkboxes for attendance lists. As mentioned before, I mostly use my drive through the Chrome browser. Here is my lesson planner once again and a link to the gradebook for each of my classes. In my gradebook file I have got one sheet for homework and grades and the final grades of course. Two functions in Google Sheets are particularly useful for gradebooks in Google Sheets. One is data validation. Here you can predefine values for cells. This is useful for entering grades for example. Then you can simply use the grades from a drop down list. The other useful function is conditional formatting which allows you to highlight different values, e.g. particularly good grades or fail grades. I have chosen the gradebook spreadsheet as the destination for my attendance form. One nice thing about Google Forms here is that you don't need to enter the date for each class as each form automatically assigns a timestamp to each entry. The next step is to copy the data to a separate sheet where you can calculate the absence for each student. The first formula simply counts how often each student has been absent. If you are not familiar with the formula, you can simply pause this video and copy it. Then you have to count the number of classes and finally you calculate the percentage of attendance. You do this dividing the number of absences by the number of classes and then subtracting from one. Finally, you use the percent data format. If you wish, you can also create a chart from your data. Finally, I've got a summary sheet in which I copy the grades and attendance columns from the respective sheets. I also import presentation topics and dates from a separate file which I share with my students so that they can enter the data themselves. The formula here is import range, then the key of the spreadsheet which you can copy from the URL link in the sheet as well as the column. If you want to keep the spreadsheet tidy, 
you can create a separate document for notes, behavior, and so on. If you want to use photographs of your students, a table in a document is easier to work with than a spreadsheet. You can link to parts of a document, like here by using an anchor. I do this by creating a table of content and copying the link from there. Back in my lesson planner. It's always a good thing to have fast access to your teaching materials so that you can quickly find them in the classroom or print them out for your students. In general, I prefer to keep my detailed lesson plans inside a Google Slide presentation. I use slides as a whiteboard to show solutions or corrections and again to link to materials such as videos and audio files in my drive. You can also link to a specific slide in a presentation just by copying the current URL. Of course, this is just meant for inspiration and I hope that you won't find it hard to create your personal teacher tool with Google Drive.